my name is Michał Zanowicz. I'm a product development manager at, at IT Integro. I'll be leading today's webinar uh, about what's new and planned for advanced intercompany. So let's let's start. The, the agenda for today is uh, quite simple. So we have the session, the, the, the blog called What's New. Here I would uh, present to you and also explain what we deliver to the application in the recent uh, uh, six months. Then what's planned? Uh, so we are considering new features in a in application, new processes to be handled. Uh, I, will, I would I would like to and briefly introduce you to these processes. Uh, I will also send you the, the survey uh, we would like you to uh, to conduct uh, in order to give you to give us uh, your feedback about the processes we plan. And moreover, I will briefly discuss our ro roadmap for the following year. And at the end, the Q and A. Uh, so if you have any questions, I try to answer them right away. Uh, okay, so the summary of the advanced your company application basically in 2023. So Q3, Q4. So we started from June, uh, mid, mid of June with the version 3.1 and we came up to 3.6. So a couple of the releases um, in the last half year. Uh, we didn't have any breaking changes. And this is something uh, I was also uh, saying yesterday on the MDMS webinar that we don't want to break the compatibility between different versions of the applications and also between different versions of the business central because that's the added value of our applications that they talk between different environments, different versions. Uh, so we really uh, paying atten attention to, the, to that aspect. Um, what we focused on we focused on an improved user experience. Uh, so what we did, we uh, we rebuilt a lot of pages, a lot of views in application, uh, just to make them more intuitive, more user user friendly. Uh, now I, I will not be showing them one by one, and uh, when I will be showing you different parts of the applications, and then uh, I will tell you what actually changed. Uh, so during the demo of different features, um, I will I will be explaining uh, what we changed and basically why we did it, why we decided to do this. So if you're already using the the most current version of the advanced inter company, you probably noticed these changes, and uh, users probably also did. Um, so we re reworked a lot of documents. Um, so the, all, not all the fields are visible. We group, we, pre, we correct grouping of the fields of the actions. We uh, um, rebuild a bit, a bit the customer vendor cards. Of course, I'm saying uh, about the intercompany fields, advanced intercompany fields, not the, the the whole structure of the of the customer card. Uh, also, the buffer pages, but in our opinion, better better look. So I hope you, we hope you you like it. Uh, so also the visibility of the IIC fields depend depending on the IIC document field from the from the on the document because currently even though you didn't have the IIC document all these fields from the intercompany all the actions were visible we decided to change it so only for the IIC documents uh, some some fields are basically visible and also uh, we uh, we did. Um, we control the visibility of the fields depending on the use functionality. So if you use the pre-invoice fun functionality, for instance, then in the buffer you'll, you'll see the, the, the fields from the pre-invoice. But if you have the, if you don't have the standalone documents, you will not see the fields for the dedicated for the st standalone documents and so on. Just to limit and simplify the, the views and possibilities uh, for the, uh, for the users. Uh, okay, uh, then we, if, if we are talking about the usability, um, we did a small change in the buffer um, to give you, give users actually a possibility to batch accept, validate, delete buffer messages. Because currently you had to basically process message by message. So you need to open the message card and accept it if you 
were doing this manually, of course, not that we had the job queue, uh, but uh, there were no possibility to uh, process a couple of the messages at once. So for better usability, we, we basically uh, add such a feature. And uh, how does it work? It's a very simple function. So I'll create as a demo uh, the purchase documents. Uh, currently, I'm in a Kronos buyer company, Kronos seller, that's the other side. So uh, all, all, demo, all the features I'll be, I'll be showing you will be, will be, be between the buying company, Kronos buyer and the seller company. The, the, the selling uh, the selling com company so the, the, this is the, the term terminology to which we keep and also present to to you on all the demos and and um, presentations so i create the purchase order document mm, i choose the vendor i have one vendor kernel seller so now you can see that once I selected the counselor, uh, I see the intercompany fast step. So it's now all the fields are grouped together. We move some fields from the header uh, also to this fast step. However, we decided to leave the IAC document, IAC status code still in a general fast step um, because the users used to it and actually they are quite important. So uh, not to undo um, a confusion between the users with the, the, the field state there basically. So we have the ISC document mar mark. Now I choose the item, uh, the quantity, and I'm going to release the docu document. It's outbound. I will send it right away. And I quickly create a new order just to have multiple messages in the buffer on the other side. So again, choosing the current seller. Uh, I'll choose the item, different quantity, release, and send. So now I have two uh, documents to purchase order in the send status. I switch to Chrono Seller. If I hit refresh here, we can see that we have two documents in the buffer. Uh, and here I have three different actions batch delete, batch validate, batch accept. So I can mark the records I want to process. Budget validate will basically validate the fields, the, the messages, if they are correct and so on. So they're marked as green if they are uh, validated uh, correctly. And then we can hit batch accept action. Do you want to accept all the selected buffer documents? Yes. And system will create says orders. So now you, can, you could see that from three uh, to five, I two, two additional I see says order have been created. So very simple function, but very useful. And um, especially if you have a lot of, of buffer documents to, to process at once. Okay, uh, the next feature uh, is to support the automation process. So automate with job queue action. Uh, it was introduced again for the user experience for the easier configuration for the app automations for the partners uh, for having the complete settings for the automation for the job queue creation because currently you needed to uh, basically configure job queue by job queue uh, and we uh, introduced a new fun possibility to have all the job queues created at once uh, and this Predefined configurations depends on the type of the company. So if it's a selling company, if it's a buying company, or maybe both. Uh, and how does it work, basically? So if we go now in a current buyer or seller to the IAC setup. By the way, this is also the, the view we, we revealed. Uh, but maybe maybe about it later. Uh, we added the action automate with job queue. So if, if you hear this action, you have the the kind of the, uh, the the page where you can choose what's the company type. If it's the buying company, selling company, buying and selling, be both. Uh, and what processes 
basically should be automated. So if the purchase confirmation should be automated, creating new documents, ship, sending the shipment notification. So in this one view, we can decide which part of the processes for the buying company should be automated. We already give you the suggestion. Then now it's, it's, it's up to you uh, which parts of the processes should be automated. Also, the job queue settings are here, so you can specify uh, how often the job queue should be run, so number of minutes be between runs, uh, maximum number of attempts to run, rerun delay, uh, the job queue category code that's inherited actually from the settings, so it's not editable here. Uh, and if the job queue should be ready up uh, right away. And then you can hit the OK action and system will create all the job queues uh, needed for this company for the automation. And depending on the company type, either, either you could choose the buying company or selling company, you have different options. So basically what, what should be set up, it's suggested here and now you can decide if this should be uh, automated or, or not. Uh, buying and selling, that would be all the options here. So if you have the company, which is the buyer and the seller, uh, this will create all the job queues uh, for both uh, operations. Uh, I will not create the job queues here. I think I already have them. Moreover, I don't want to automate the processes. Uh, however, at the end, maybe in the seller company, I can do this. Don't think I have anything set up here. So that would be selling company, hit OK. Yes, we don't want. And the job queues have been created. Uh, oh, that's that, that's important also. So moreover, um, the settings in the IIC setup has been updated. So, you know, I will show it in a moment. There are settings saying that if the messages should be only validated or accepted right away. Uh, so this uh, settings will also be uh, automatically updated. So you don't need to remember about it anymore. OK, and now if we go to the job queue uh, entries. We do have uh, for all this required processes, job queues already configured, uh, which will be running basically under the specific job queue category code. Um, yes, and this automations, which has been also set up, uh, you remember maybe that uh, we have the fast tab for the automation here in the IAC setup. We decided to move it. So you now have the action documents and buffer automation where the settings are separated and there are a split on a documents automation and the buffer automation. Uh, so for the buffer automation, uh, when you create the job queue from this uh, special action, you can see that auto process new sales documents, sales confirmation, the accept has been set up here. So this uh, this is something the system will do for you. Uh, however, you always have the possibility to review this and manage it, manage it uh, on your on your own. So we believe that also that it will increase the readability uh, for of the of the settings because everything was on this one page. A lot of fields which were not uh, quite clear which which one are important, which are are not. Uh, so to simplify it, we decided to to do some uh, some um, changes in the structure. So now in general there are just two fields. Then the fields are split by the category, by, by the process which they are used for. So for standalone documents, for the pre-invoice documents, for the drop shipment, and then all other advanced fields are here in the advanced uh, fast step. So they are more advanced. They are just specific for some processes. Of course, they are described in the documentation. Maybe you use some of them, maybe, maybe not, but they are not the main fields uh, to, be, to be used in the application. Uh, OK, so that was the action for the automate with job queue. Now let's move on. Sending outbound messages on IIC send action. Probably some of you already noticed that uh, I, I presented this, this, this feature, uh, but maybe just to mm, give you a bit of history. Um, currently, or maybe, maybe before, uh, because currently it's different, 
before the uh, IIC send action was basically setting the status of the document to outbound. So the document was waiting to be sent uh, and the user needed to execute, user or job queue actually was executing the send outbound messages um, to, uh, to physically send the document and change the status of the document to send. So we do a small improvement here. So of course, IAC send action is still setting the status to unbound, but it's executing uh, send unbound messages report immediately. So when you hit this uh, this action, the document already will be sent. Uh, how you can use it? Oh, I'm in an IAC setup. Uh, so in the buffers and document automation, we have the field called send unbound messages on IAC send. So this report will be executed. Um, it will not send just one document. It's, it's, it's executing the report. So it will try to send all the documents pending to be sent from the IAC messages. And that's important. That's why we did, did an option here, just to not to change the current behavior and uh, give you the possibility to decide if this should be enabled or not. Uh, probably most of you will, will turn it on. Uh, so, and that's why, uh, that's why it's an option. Sorry. Uh, okay. Now we have the purchase order. I'll choose the Chrono seller again. Uh, we have the document here again, the quantity. We are going to release the document and when releasing the document, the status can be set to unbound right away, and it is. And before you needed to go to send unbound messages and basically send the, mm, the document. Now, if you hit the IAC send action, I think the job queue works in the meantime, but if you hit this action, the document will be, uh, will be basically sent. So we don't need to search for the report. You can just release and IAC send. Uh, it's also much convenient for the demo purposes, so you don't need to search for the report in a in a settings, but uh, but to uh, send it directly from the document. Uh, okay, so that that's the improvement uh, which you can also enable. Then um, small change in. Uh, in the settings, um, system generated field on the IAC statuses. We added this field, first of all, on the IAC statuses, but we consider that also on other settings of the advanced their company. And what it is for? Um, if we go to IAC statuses, or IC, IAC status codes, uh, you can see that we have the, the, the statuses basically suggested by the application. When you install the app, you get all the statuses uh, created. And all of them have some recommended settings for block release, block reopen, block, block IAC send. Uh, so of course you can apply the change log to, to tra track if something has been changed. Uh, but we decided to put here the system generated field uh, so whenever you try or user try to change the to allow some functionalities on different statuses, for instance, for document closed, what well, doesn't mean that it's closed? It means it also, it has already been invoiced, right? So we shouldn't get any updates uh, anymore for the sales order in a selling company. So to prevent this, we have block IAC send. But user always can just click here and uh, allow sending the document again. I mean, the user need to be admin anyway, right? But but it happened that uh, this features, this functionalities was uh, released back. Uh, so we encountered some unexpected behavior of the application. Uh, so we decided to put such a message that system generated settings are about to modify, to be modified, that this might affect them, uh, might have an impact on the process. Do you want to continue? Just to be, uh, just to worry the user that 
this change of the settings might affect the processes and may, might, might cause some problems in the in application. So you need, you, you, you need to be aware of it, that it has an impact on the processes and uh, it might not be the best uh, idea basically to change the settings. So if we click yes, of course, the changes are done, uh, but system generated is unmarked. You, thanks to this, also the partners will know that someone has played with the settings, with the default settings, because on the first side, you don't know if it was the, uh, the settings recommended by us, by uh, by ISV, or or this is the custom settings by by um, changed by by users. So thanks to this field, you'll be aware of that. And of course, you can uh, simply restore system generated settings. So if there were some changes, something uh, really ma someone re really messed up the settings for the statuses, uh, you can restore system generated settings. And here it is. So this is uh, this is how this uh, functionality works. It's rather to aware. Uh, about the the consequences of changing the IIC status codes because we did um, design the application to be very generic, as you as you noticed, and uh, it brings some risks. Just to remit these risks, and uh, this is why uh, we decided to do such, such a simple uh, uh, simple modification. And exactly what I already said. So notifications for the users, and the the information for the admin, that the default settings have been changed, and the possibility to, to restore the default settings. Okay, the next one, uh, all data before for the web services communications, also for the settings. Um, that's a quote, actually. Uh, SOAP is replaced by all data before the support for SOAP endpoints will be removed in a later release. So that's the quote from the Microsoft uh, Microsoft um, documentation, which basically uh, is the same from a couple of the BC releases. Uh, however, we decided already to 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 prepare the all data alternative way for the SOAP, which was from the beginning in our uh, application, the main protocol used for the web services communication. Um, so now we are ready for this uh, for this change, and uh, you can start using the all data v4 protocol, the same like we uh, already did in the MDMS application, and to help you. Uh, build the all data URL because it's built, it's not to be copied uh, like the SOAP endpoint uh, from the web service from the other company. We prepare a, a simple simple wizard. So now if we go to the system, uh, if we go to the IIC endpoints, if we tr create a new endpoint for all data, we change the web service protocol to all data before you have the assist edit action and depending on environment type if it's the on premises or bc online uh, different parameters will pop up which you need to to, to put uh, so the company name the protocol if it's the http or the secure one https the server uh port probably this one and the web service instance bc uh it's a company name sorry it's the chrome seller buyer bc 23.4 and finish will basically build the web service address uh for the all data communication so this is how you can how you can uh, use it Okay, so we also advise to try using the all data. Uh, it's something new. I don't know if many of you are already using this. Uh, so if you could give you give us uh, your feedback about it, uh, we'll, we will we'll really appreciate. Okay, settings. IAC initial initialized action uh, from the IAC setup has been removed. That's also the change we did 
um, just to limit number of the op actions which user can should take after installing the app. So uh, now when you create a new company or um, uh, install the app basically, the function will be executed automatically. So all the default settings like ASC statuses, complex messages and so on, they, they will be um, inserted uh, right away, created right away. There is not a lot of data. Uh, of course, in the cloud, the database size matters, but there is not a lot of, not a, not, not, uh, a lot of data. And I think that the, the, ben the benefits of having this created automatically, it's, it's, uh, it's bigger than uh, the need of uh, using this action every time you, you install the app. And basically, we remove these functions from the IAC setup. So now it will happen automatically, and you need to bother about this anymore. Uh, okay, pre invoice default posting date. And uh, that was the requirement coming from you. For, uh, we, we, we received such a request on the service desk, actually. Because for the pre invoice process, the posting date was always taken from the purchase order. Yeah, it makes uh, it makes sense to um, to to inherit the posting date actually from the incoming invoice. So there is an option now in the settings ISC setup and the pre-invoice fast app. So you can decide if the posting date should be uh, in for the pre-invoice process. It should be taken from the order like 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 it was right now and uh, the alternative ways of the as you can see the invoice so each field from um, you have one for the orders second one for the return orders um, uh, you can decide if the posting date should be from the order or from the invoice uh, drop shipment i believe that that was the future a lot of you uh, we're waiting for um, it's closing actually the, the need of the full automation of the process. So with the auto post, the end customer says order, uh, the process of the drop shipment can be fully automated um, because the last part needed to be performed by users like in the standard the sales order needed to be posted first and then the purchase order uh, has to be created, uh, has to be po could be posted, sorry. Uh, however, we did an automation here that uh, you can decide when the end customer says order should be posted. So from the benefits, if you can fully automate the intercompany dropshipment process, no need to post it manually anymore. Uh, partial posting is also handled. So if you post the purchase order partially, the only connected lines will be posted from the end customer says orders. And if we're talking about not connected lines at all, because you might have some additional costs with the charge items or GL counts, uh, they will be also posted. So if you have the quantity to ship, filled in quantity to invoice, fill in for such lines, they will be either posted for the partial one or for the end, uh, if you post everything at once. So uh, this is how this uh, functionality works. And maybe I will show it to you. So if we go to the ISC setup, first of all, and to the drop shipment first up, uh, you can see we have the field called auto post drop shipment invoices. The same field you have for the credit memos, but so for the return process. And you can decide if they should not be posted automatically, if they should be posted when receiving the vendor invoice or when getting the shipment notification. So now I will I get the shipping notification that the goods have been sent from uh, uh, to the end customer. I would like to post the sales invoice. Um, and okay, let's uh, create the sales order to the end customer. So I'll create a new sales order. So at the Atom Corporation, uh, here you have the intercompany first step, just one field. It's not an IAC document, but we get the IAC dropshipment vendor by default from the customer card. 
Again, we choose the dropshipment purchasing code. It can be also automatically taken from the mm, from the item cart if we, we if we uh, if we configure that. Uh, okay, and that's that's all. Now we can release the document and go to actions in their company, create dropshipment purchase order. So now we created the purchase order. That's the IAC document now. I can release it and send it to the partner. So now if we switch to Chronos Seller in the buffer, we have a new buffer document. I would open it and accept. Yeah. So now we have the sales order. The sales order uh, we need to release and send back to the partner. Coming back to Kronos Buyer Company, I hit refresh. The order is accepted. We have now the new document in buffer with the update. I'll just batch accept it. It's much faster now. It's confirmed and the confirmation should be sent as well here. So now I'm going to post the shipment. So just the shipment to the end customer. Uh, I'll go to shipments. I'll send uh, the document, shipment is sent. And now we get the, uh, we should get the shipment notification here in a, in a buffer. Probably it was already processed. I'm so lucky. Yes, I was so lucky that uh, it was automatically processed. So we have the quantity received here. Uh, I wanted to present it to you manually, but the job queue was faster. Uh, and if we go to the sales orders, there's no uh, sales order for the added data corporation than the one I created. It was with nine. It was already posted. So if we go to the posted sales invoice, so we have this one. It was created today, yeah, 28. Just to be sure, 15, yeah, that was the order I basically processed. So when I sent the shipment notification, system posted the shipment, uh, the purchase receipt, shipment, uh, sales shipment on a sale, connected sales order, and also posted the sales invoice uh, to the end customer automatically. Okay, let's move forward because we are running out of time. Uh, drop shipment and another enhancement for the drop shipment process. So possibility to create create multiple purchase orders from one sales order. Uh, what we did, basically we put the vendor number to the sales lines. So now you have the possibility from one purchase order, create multiple, uh, sorry, from one sales order, create multiple purchase order for different vendors to one end customer sales order. And how does it work? Again, I'm going to create the sales order for the end customer. I will not be going through the whole process right now. I'll just show you the, this part of the functionality which was uh, prepared. So again, a uh, datum corporation. Uh, we have the default drop shipment vendor here. So we decide that this desk should be delivered by this vendor, okay. Uh, however, the second line, we would like another item, but from different vendor. And if we scroll to the right a bit, you can see that there is IIC drop shipment vendor number field, the same line which was in a, in a header. You can change it. Of course, it can be in their company vendor. It can be just the regular vendor. Uh, I'll choose the Fabricam. So it is, it's not the intercompany vendor, that would be the regular purchase order, not the intercompany document. However, it's uh, it's allowed to do this with the app. Now, if release, go to actions, intercompany, create dropship and purchase order. Now, two purchase order, so orders have been created. So uh, single, uh, single one for, for different lines. So if we now go to the purchase order, for the second line, that's for the fabricant vendor. The second line just included in this order. And if we go to the first line, purchase order, 
that's for the cron seller and that's the IAC document then. So this feature will allow you to, to split the say it's end, end customer sales order to different uh, purchase purchase orders. Uh, okay, next one then. On the other hand, sometimes we would like to uh, create one purchase order from multiple sales orders. So if you have one IC vendor, which will deliver the goods to multiple uh, end customers. You can also uh, mm, uh, you can also follow such a process. So what we did, we uh, did we gave you the alternative way to the standard get sales order section, uh, which gives the possibility to get the lines of the sales orders, not the headers. So not only linked li lines, it, it will show you. Um, not only the lines, but uh, also not processed lines. In the standard, uh, you always, even though the, the the lines were, the documents were um, downloaded and connected to the purchase order, they were still visible for other documents. So uh, we exclude, we, we put additional filters. So so it's not the case in in in, in our function, uh, and that gives us the possibility to create one intercompany purchase order linked to many and customer sales orders. So again, more flexibility in a drop drop shipment process. And uh, OK, back to the application. Uh, so now if we create the sales orders. So I create this. I think that I already have one created before from the Edatum Corporation. Uh, so we have the, the now line, the IAC drop shipment purchasing code and the quantity. I'll release it. OK, so we have the sales order. There's more, so probably there will be more lines. Uh, and if we create now a purchase order from the scratch, so I'll create a new purchase order directly to Kronos seller. Uh, you can go to actions, functions, drop shipment, get sales order lines. It will open a view of the sales lines, which you can get on that. That was the, the one I created. Uh, so we can try to get this one and this one. And OK. And as the result, you can see that I have two, um, two lines for the purchase order uh, created, which will be linked to the sales order and customer sales order. So that's the drop shipment link which we built with our action. Uh, more flexibility and more useful rather than the one in the in the standard, in our opinion. Uh, so we hope you you like it. OK, and last but not least uh, from the features, it's a copy comments. Uh, actually, uh, that was coming from the, this request was also coming from uh, the service desk as far as remember, um, because the comments was not what's not, was not copied forward from the um, from this end customer sales order into the purchase order. Uh, so we decided to prepare such a functionality as well to handle this. So if we create, uh, sorry, and customer sales order, that's the drop shipment. So if we create a new sales order, and again, let's make a let's let's make a line here. You have the comments. Hope hope, hope is here. Yeah, in the, in the header. So we have the header comments and also the line comments. So both of these comments will be copied to the purchase order when creating them with, with our application. So if you use the function create dropship and purchase order, these comments should be moved uh, to both lines, line, 
and also to the header. Uh, what it was related to warehouse, no, not here. Here it is. Every page is different header comments. So if you have multiple lines, of course, the lines to the, the, to the specific ones will, will be just moved and so on. And further on, it will be handled by basically our applications, uh, our application. So in a complex message template, so the structure which is deciding what should be synchronized or not, uh, these comments will be moved forward to our uh, intercompany inter partner. Uh, okay, so I guess it was all from the fun from the functionalities which will which were del deliver. Uh, now about yeah, and now a few words about the plans. We have 20 minutes, so uh, it should be enough. What's planned? We consider new processes to be handled in app application for the inventory and the production. Uh, processes. Uh, these are three processes we were discussing in, internally first. Uh, later on, I would like to uh, to um, also get your feedback. So uh, I will put a link to the quick survey. It should not take you more than three minutes just to fill it up. We will really appreciate your help and your feedback. We'll also send it by email later on after the webinar. Uh, because it's important for us to know uh, your opinion on that. So basically what we plan is three processes. First one is the intercompany transfer. So creating the intercompany transfer order, basically sending in from one company to another, and then moving uh, the goods between the location, the virtual partner location, uh, reducing the stock with the inventory shipment document and increasing the stock on the other side with the inventory receipt document, then making the transfer from this virtual location to the main location. And that will allow you to move the goods without any sales and purchase documents. Um, it's not the case in Europe. In Europe, probably you need the, the document for all uh, that's that kind of the transactions, but uh, in other pieces of the world, areas of the world that might be allowed uh, and also we will uh, synchronize the information about the shipment and received so you know you know uh, that the goods are still in transit and the goods have received or been, already been shipped from uh, from the partner so that's the first process we consider in a very high picture and a very um, a high level um, explanation the second one is the subcontracting, so the production process. Uh, so we would like to prepare the IC production order documents to synchronize them between partners. Uh, then use the IC transfer um, process to move the goods from us to our subcontractor. So our subcontractor could use the goods to the production uh, and then we would like also to synchronize the, the routings, the production bond, the consumption. So if the goods are consumed uh, by our subcontractor, they will be also automatically taken off from the subcontractor location. And once the goods are produced, the, the output is posted, uh, we will get the sales order, um, uh, intercompany sales order, which will create the purchase order on the vendor side and that will update the production order and so on. So all the connections between the documents will be kept. But the main idea is to handle the subcontracting. So sending the goods, using the goods by the subcontractor uh, and receiving then the, uh, the finished product or uh, uh, directly in our facility, in our company, or maybe sending this further to the end customer. Uh, and the question is if any of your customers or maybe there are some customers on this webinar which might be interested in such a process. And we'll re re really appreciate uh, your feedback here. And the, the third process uh, is the consignment. 
so probably most of you have um, have experienced the consignment process in the business central. It can be done manually, more or less, uh, and we would like to uh, implement the consignment process also in the intercompany uh, ap application for the groups. So making the transfer of the goods from one company to another, tracking the consignment stock on both sides. And then when we have the shipment to the end customer, when we have the sales order to, to the end customer, creating actually the intercompany purchase order, uh, which will which will value the consignment stock we get. And it, that will be sent to the partner, to the buyer company to be converted to the IC sales order. And that will basically be responsible for the sales between the buyer and seller and will also reduce the consignment stock. So that will give you the, the insight about for, for the consignment stock uh, and uh, also few features uh, which will basically uh, make this process smoother but again that's for the groups so if you have the consignment between the same companies in the group uh, this is the the, uh, the target uh, we we consider so uh, I'll, pu I'll put in the chat um, the link to this the survey uh, here it is I'll just copy the link uh, we will really appreciate if you could If you could uh, participate in a survey and give us your feedback, uh, it's a very simple survey. So basically, uh, three questions about if you if you are if you would be interested in such a solutions. With the solutions I just described. So one, two, three: IC transfer, IC subcontracting, IC consignment, and maybe some information if you uh, need any or miss any other functionalities in, in an advanced their company app. Uh, so that would be great if you could uh, share with us uh, your experience in that area. Uh, so this is not planned yet, <laughs> just to be uh, just to be uh, on the same page. We consider this. We already have something in our mind that uh, that. Uh, that these are the processes which could be uh, could be uh, handled with the advanced their company, um, but uh, if they will be de developed and when, uh, probably we we should make the decision soon. So uh, we are really waiting for for your for your, for your feedback. Uh, okay, and then what's more planned? I mean, uh, what's already planned? Uh, in a in an application in a, for this uh, for this year, mm, we would like to implement the notifications for the buffer validation errors. So if you have any buffer errors, uh, um, you would you would you would be able to get the notifications. Of course, you can um, you can use some power automates uh, for for this, but uh, we'd like to have something built in the app uh, because many of you were asking of the, for for this. Uh, tracking differences because now you have this information warning error um, for tracking the differences or bit be between the sent and received messages. Uh, so there are no tolerances. So basically, if the price was changed, you will get the warning. But uh, it was there was a solution for the investor company in a a vision that implemented the tolerances so you would you wouldn't get the warning if the price for instance is in a specific range so from two value then you will not get the warning so you are allowed basically to manipulate the price between uh, some higher and lower uh, range of the tolerance so we would like also to to deliver such a functionality in a, in a app and the, for drop shipment, this is a lot of you were asking for. Uh, it's selecting the fields to be synchronized between the end customer sales order and intercompany purchase order. So basically choosing which fields should be copied without any customization uh, from the end customer sales order to the intercompany purchase order. So for, for the intercompany exchange, we have the templates where you can decide which fields are exchanged. But uh, for for the creation of the purchase order, for the prepar preparation 
um, there are no such a possibility. So we would like to also introduce you a simple settings where you can select the fields which should be converted to, to each one. So to give uh, even better flexibility in a drop shipment process. Uh, and for the pre-invoice, uh, we did get actually uh, one or two cases regarding the reservations. And uh, here we have a, a issue for the pre-invoice process when creating the transfer order, because in the app we handle the item tracking lines. They are, of course, they are based on the reservation entry table as well. But I'm talking about the reservations done between the documents. So uh, if we will have the um, the purchase order already reserved uh for maybe production or the sales further on and you create a transfer order there's a problem with um, changing the reservation from the purchase order of the pre invoice to the transfer order basically uh, you'll get their message in most cases so this is the process we also want to to handle because in our opinion that should be should be handled in app um, however uh it's quite rare if I could say that, uh, but important for the ones who are using the pre-invoice functionality. Uh, and the last one, it's, it's bold, uh, the breaking change. This is, uh, this is what we plan for Q1. Maybe it will be later, to be honest, but we uh, want to refactor the code related to the, ma the messages processing. And the, so that would what we already analyzes analyzed that that would require us to uh, change a bit the document log entries data structure and I'm afraid that we will not uh, uh, will not here avoid the breaking change in the app uh, so we will not break the compatibility uh, but uh, uh, between the the different versions uh, however. And that will be this, the change in the in the schema. So if you if you if you upgrade to the new version, that will be some changes and the upgrade could you need to uh, to um, move the data between different uh, structures. Because what we also are that that's the base for us to work on a, a real time communication. So now we have a lot of in the business center a lot of uh, features which will actually allow us to. To prepare such real-time communication, so there there is no need to wait for the job queue, so that so the job queue could be executed right away. Uh, so in order to prepare such a functionality, we would need to change a bit um, the structure of the of the application. Uh, so it's it's not it's not uh, confirmed yet the day for for now we plan this. Uh, I will. I think it will be later on. Uh, however, we will notify you about such changes, and also we'll put the notes in the release notes. Also in the app, there will be information that some tables will be obsolete. Uh, so this is something he will we will uh, will inform you about. Uh, and of course, uh, the current roadmap is available here in our doc documentation. So uh, if you're uh, if you are curious what we what's the current plans, uh, you can always access this page. If you have any questions, uh, let us know on the service desk. We will uh, explain. If you have any needs, uh, also let us know. Um, we will consider all the requests and maybe uh, also update the roadmap. Thank you for your attention, for finding time for today's webinar. Uh, you can always contact me on the email or uh, directly on the service desk. If you have any uh, specific technical question on the application, there is a team which, which is supporting you. Uh, thank you again and have a, have a good day. Bye-bye.